as you can see, we're in a small group up here, but praising God anyway. So um, if I can have everybody stand up with me, we're going to open up with prayer and then start our worship. Okay, pray with me. Lord Jesus, we come before you now and we just want to just thank you so much for this time, this opportunity to come before you and just worship you. Lord, as we come before you in adoration and love for what you've done for us, God, I just ask that your presence be welcome here. Lord, that we would feel it moving. Lord, I pray that um, you would overcome any struggles or any obstacles that are going on in our hearts or maybe in our minds right now. Lord, let us rest in um, the faith that you can overcome anything. And Lord, um, I just pray for the people that can make it tonight, wherever they're at at this time, Lord. I just pray that you be with them. And Lord, I just pray now as we come before you and we worship you, Lord, that um, you would just bring a smile to your face. In your name I pray.
And Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight, Lord, and we thank you so much, God, for what you've given us. Father, I pray that your holy hands upon this place tonight, God. I pray that your spirit speaks to each one of our hearts, Father, and that your Holy Spirit just blows us away, Lord, that we can have our eyes open to know more about you. And Father, I pray tonight there's anything in our minds and our hearts that you just put that aside, God, that we may hear your word and truly receive it. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We glorify you. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, guys. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just have a few announcements. Um, this Sunday, we're going to have our first baptism. So we, everyone's invited to come. Rain or shine, we're going to have it outside. We have a pool. Could be kind of cold, we're not sure. But we're going to do it. We know for sure that God commands us to be baptized. So if you haven't been baptized, since you actually start following the Lord, it's highly recommended. So if you want to, if you have a heart or desire to, if you want to be empowered, if you want God to move in your life, then get baptized. And so we will have uh, out front in the foyer some sign-up sheets. It'll be 3 o'clock on Sunday. And I'll be here an hour early, so for those that are actually going to be getting baptized, we'll be meeting together first for an hour prior, and just kind of talking and praying and getting just an understanding of what it really means, the symbolism behind it, and what you're proclaiming to the world, who you are. <clears throat> That's this Sunday, 3 o'clock. Even if you're not going to be baptized, please come support, attend, we'll have a good time. It'll be about an hour long in, uh, in general. Myself, Pastor Regis, and Eric will be actually in the pool, um, and we'll be doing the actual baptisms, all right? Next Wednesday, we're going to have a Christmas potluck. You know, everyone's saying that no one feels the spirit of Christmas or the joy right now, but you know what? We're, we will change that. So come next Wednesday, we're going to have a good time, have some good food. If you have a desire to cook or make something, just sign up, you know, up front. If not, come and enjoy the festivities. We'll have some crafts for the kids. Um, our heart really is just, just to have some good fellowship, just a short study on Christmas, but really just to have a good time and, and really get in the spirit of what Christmas really means and to just proclaim the birth of Christ and have fun with one another. So please be a part of that. Invite friends, family, whether they come here or not, just, and just have them come regardless. Um, <clears throat> Next Wednesday as well, uh, we're going to have the final part of our toy drive and our food drive. So most of our donations will be going to St. Jude Hospital for, the, you know, uh, for all the kids. So if you guys have a heart to help donate, please do. The box up front, just, just put it in the box. By next Wednesday, we're going to probably just stop that. And then hopefully the following week or the week after, we're all going to go to, uh, to St. Jude Hospital. Pray with the young kids. Give them toys that, 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 uh, that they'd like to have and just really bless them. <clears throat> Two more things. Between uh, the women's study will be canceled for the next couple weeks on Saturdays because of the holidays, everything going on. So we're going to resume that on, on January 5th at 11 o'clock. So go on our website. <coughs> Today I spent like four hours putting up the website as far as the calendar. Just go on there and just click on the calendar. Um, just join it. It'll be kind of fun. But ultimately, all our events will be on there going forward. So just check it out, ledbyone.org. <clears throat> Lastly, if you don't have a Bible, please raise your hand, and we'll get you a Bible. Meanwhile, we're going to welcome up Pastor Regis. And Pastor Regis, um, <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Everybody's doing well tonight? Yes, sir. All right, man. It was a great worship right there. We, uh, let's just pray here for a minute. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we come before your presence right now, Father. Lord, we just want to say thank you. We want to say thank you, Lord, that you are such a great God. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be worshipped, Lord. You're worthy to be lifted up, Lord God. Lord, we just bless your name right now. Holy Spirit, we just welcome you. We welcome your presence even now that you may minister to us in this place tonight. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory belongs to you. We love you so much, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the opportunity that you've given us to meet together tonight. 
and to lift up your holy name. Holy Spirit, we ask you tonight that you would be our teacher, that you would reveal those things which we know is not in this place tonight. May glory and honor be brought to your name. And we promise to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, thank God uh, for uh, Pastor Abraham. You know, he called and asked me, um, would I be interested in coming and sharing tonight? Of course, I've been out of town here for uh, for this last past week and, and uh, doing ministry back. Um, in the southeast part of our nation, back in, in Louisiana, and uh, just just experiencing God in greater ways, and I just thank the Lord for that tonight. Uh, we're gonna um, we're gonna start here tonight in the book of Galatians, Galatians chapter four. Uh, but as I was sharing with uh, Pastor Abraham a few minutes ago, uh, I know that you guys have been doing the teaching, of which I've been a part of that over the last month, month and a half, on uh, going through the book of Galatians. But I, I really feel in my heart uh, that that what 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 God has led Pastor Abraham uh, to do for us, like doing an expository teaching about the Book of Galatians, I think that it's a timely uh, um, thing that God has designed Himself. You know, sometimes we just kind of like seem like we stumble, you know, into doing the right thing. You know, we don't always know, and uh, sometimes we just stumble into it. But it's the leading of the Holy Ghost, and I believe that. It's very important for us to understand the time frame uh, that we're living in right now. Uh, everything in the Bible is is, is is very relative to what it, it's it's relative to what we're dealing with right now in our world. Everything the Bible comes alive and jumps off the pages. You can turn on the television set, and everything that we read in the Bible, you can relate what we read in the Bible to today's time. All right, and so tonight uh, it's going to be a little different. Uh, we're going to jump in the Word and read a few scriptures out of uh, out of this chapter. But I believe that these scriptures that we're dealing with here, uh, what's what happened here um, in the area of Galatia here, I believe it's exactly what's happening right now in the time frame that we live in. All right, um, if you have your Bibles tonight, you can go to Galatians chapter four. Galatians chapter four. The Bible reads here in Galatians chapter 4, we're going to read verses 1 through 6 to you, 1 through 7. It says, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, uh, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father, even so we, the church, we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons... God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Now, it's my understanding that you guys last week were in Galatians chapter 3. And Pastor Abraham finished up Galatians chapter 3. Uh, just to just back up a little bit. In Galatians chapter 3, we, we, we need to understand something here tonight. Is that God is a God of grace. He's a God of grace. He's a God of mercy. He's a God of wrath. He's a God of love. God is not one dimensional. Right? A lot of times we, we look at God and we look at God from, 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 the, uh, from the angle that everything to us as perceived is all good when it's not. And what I mean by that is that when, when the anger of God is released, when the wrath of God is released, and we see that, you know, through the Bible and in the earth, we see that it's kind of hard for us to mentally adjust because we know God is being this God of love. And even in God's wrath, there's love. Even in God's anger, there's love. 
Even in God's mercy, there is love because God is a God of love. God is a God of ultimate wisdom. And so when we see God uh, do things in the earth, it, it doesn't mean that, that God doesn't know what he's doing. God, God is balanced all around. You know, so when, when, when whatever comes out of God, it's not an imbalance. It's, it's, it's not chaos. It's balance. And so what I'm saying about that is that concerning the Christian life that we live, there is a balance in the life that we should live. We should not live our lives according to law. We are not upon the law. We are under grace, but as we are under grace, we are under love. Because there is an obligation that you and I must share in the free will gift that God has given all of humanity. You know, a lot of times we think that we can live the way we want to live and do what we want to do, when that's not consistent with what the Bible teaches. God is a God of grace. Meaning that when we error, in whatever way we error, that there is enough grace to cover whatever error that we do in life. A lot of times we, we take on ourselves to live outside of God's prescribed order because we think we have the freedom to do that. But the reality is, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we have to live the way that He has preordained and prescribed for us to live. The deal is within the earth is that we have become intoxicated with ourself. Humanity has become intoxicated with herself. Meaning that we've been so successful at what we, at what we have attempted to do as mankind that we've created our own way of living. The Bible tells us that men will go forth to create their own ways of righteousness and declare that the way that God has pre-ascribed for you is not the way that we read it. God is not a God of law, but God is a God of order and structure. Right? Let me say that again. He's a God of order. He's a God of structure. He's not some chaotic being <laughs> floating in the cosmos. God is a God of perfect order. Everything that God has ever done, He did it in an orderly fashion. When he created you and I, he constructed you, made you and I in his system of creation, and we came out orderly. When God set the stars, and when he set the, set the moon, and when he set the, uh, the sun in the heavens, he did it in perfect order. Everything within our world is synchronized to move the way God designed it. Anything that violates that calls... Uh, uh, the, these triggers in the earth and things happen that shouldn't happen. And we see a lot of catastrophic events in the natural is because there is a that there is an imbalance that's taking place in our world. And God wants to bring everything back into complete order the way he designed it. The Bible tells us over in uh, Romans chapter 8, it says that all of creation is literally groaning and awaiting the manifestations of the sons of God. You know, when you read that in the Amplified or the Message Version, it says that all of creation is in, is in a chaotic state. It's in a state of groaning. It's in a state of pain. And the reason that is so is because from the beginning of time, when the earth and everything that God constructed, they understood and they witnessed what perfection was. And they live in the realm of perfection. But when one man sinned, and sin came upon all men, chaos covered the earth. And so God had to curse the earth so that the earth would not produce for Adam and Eve the way that it did before the sin took place in the Garden of Eden. You know, if you read that, the Bible says God cursed the earth so that the earth could not produce for Adam in his sinful state the way that he was because the earth had been programmed to produce for man, to do whatever man said. The earth had been programmed. But now we see here something most amazing. The Bible tells us here that the purpose of the law in the book of Galatians was literally to show God's people what was wrong. We call it in the KJV a schoolmaster. It was a guideline was something that was laid to show when there was infractions, 
When we stepped outside of God's preordained borders, there were natural borders that were spoken out of the mouth of God that Moses gave to God's people, which we know as the Ten Commandments. And those Ten Commandments were literally laws that, that we could not trespass against. And if we moved over those laws, we had it offended our spiritual infractions. Right? But that was only for a short time. That wasn't something that was put there to save mankind. It was only put there to show mankind how God felt about men living without boundaries. I want you to hear me tonight. We, got, we have to reprogram in the church today. There are boundaries. God is an unlimited God. Everything He does, He can do whatever He wants. But there are boundaries. There are areas that we should never go to. Paul spoke to the church at Ephesus. He said there are some things that have been spoken among God's people that should not be done in, in the midst of God's people. He said it is a very shame for it to be spoken in public what has been taking place among God's people. And the only way we're ever going to get to a place of victory is to deal with the problems from within. Right? We must deal with the problems from within. Okay, you can't, you can't fix a real issue externally, right? If we're going to fix anything, it has to be internally. But the deal is, we don't want to deal with stuff today. We don't want to deal with real issues because what happened is that when God began to confront us, it literally, it, it seems as if, you know, it, it, it's invading your private space. The truth be told, the Bible is what it says is, which it is all true, that we belong to God. Right? If we've accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, we are His property. Right? We belong to Him. He's not handling us like sheep. He's not handling us like cattle, excuse me. He's not handling us like, like, like a bunch of slaves. He's not handling us like that. Because He gives us, he gives us the freedom to respond to Him. You know, God don't hover over us waiting to zap us. That's not who God is. God is a God of love. He's a God of compassion. That's who He is. So, when we, when we look at the whole deal about the law, we, we don't want to frustrate the law with grace. Right? We don't want to frustrate or confuse one another. One another. The law is the law. No man can keep the law. Jesus Christ came to fulfill the law and to live above the law because he was perfect and he was God in the flesh. There is no man that can keep the law. But there is a way that we can live in so much love and so much devotion towards God that we can tap into a vein of perfection. I never said be perfect. But we can live with a spirit of perfection. Meaning that we serve a perfect God and we reach out to him and after him and we desire to do the right thing every day. Paul said that when I would do good, evil was always present. We understand that. But we don't have to yield to that all the time. All right? Is anybody following me here tonight? Yes. All right. Don't sleep on me tonight now. And I know like Pastor Abe said a few weeks ago, each one of us, we have different styles and we flow differently. All right? But, but the way that I know to communicate is that what's in me, I'll speak it out to you. All right? Okay. Okay. All right, come on, talk back to me now. <laughs> All right, so we understand that. It says in verse 29 in Galatians 3, it says, well, verse 28, it says, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed. And heirs according to the promise. Alright, so what this means, thank you. What, what this means here is that God is not doing away with men. God is not doing away with women. How many women here? Okay, yeah. if you're a woman, let me see your hand. That's right. Okay, if you're a man, let me see your hand. Okay, we hey. still have men here, right? You a man? We still have women here, right? Hey. Alright, so listen, listen, guys, listen. All right, and I just I just done that quick analogy because I want you to see something here is that this is not the way you read it. God is not doing away with men. God is not doing away with the Jew. God is not doing away with the Gentile. But when we when God looks at mankind, God looks at mankind as a people. All right? 
Meaning that when we come to God, it doesn't change your agenda. He looks at us as a people, right? But, but the deal is, is when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, if you go up and you read verse 25, 26, we put on Christ, right? It's like putting a garment on, putting a coat on. We put Christ on. And so when people see us, they don't see a Jew. When people see us, they don't see a Gentile. They don't see male. They don't see female. They see those that are covered in the blood of the Lamb of God. And they see those that walk upright according to God's word and according to God's standards. That's what they see. That's what they should see. They should see the character of Christ flowing through you and I. When the world look at you, the question for you tonight is who and what do they see? The Bible tells me in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it says that we are ambassadors. We are representatives of heaven. You mean to tell me how to represent heaven? When I get saved, when I get born again, I take on the whole nature of what heaven has to offer. Now all of that is not presented or manifested immediately. Because there are some things we have to work out. But when we love God, we'll work through what we got to work out. Did you hear that? When we love God, we'll work through what we have to work out. You know, some of you guys say you still curse. Some of you guys say you still do things that you shouldn't do. But your love for God is greater than what's trying to keep you in bondage. Right? The Bible says love cover a multitude of sin. That's what the Word of God said. So we put forth a quality effort to be pleasing to God. Jesus said in the book of John, He said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandment. He didn't say live by the law. He said, if you love me, you'll do what I say. You'll keep my teachings. You'll keep my sayings. You know? And a lot of times we don't put forth that effort to do that. It's because we think that we can just do what we want to do. You can't just do what you want to do. We have to do it His way. All right? Let's say amen, everybody. Amen. All right. So, it says here in verse 1, Galatians 4, verse 1, it said, Now I say that the heirs, as long as he is a child, differ in never, uh, nothing from a servant, though he be Lord over all. Now, verse 2 says, but, but is under the tutor, governor, until the time, time appointed of the fathers. Now, I want you to hear me. This picture has to do with looking at someone that's not eligible or age, uh, uh, appropriate age to receive their inheritance. Because sometimes we can be so young and so immature when it comes to receiving what's due us that we'll squander what comes our way because of immaturity. All right, have anybody ever had anything before your time? Yep. Anybody? Yes. All right, some things we got before our time, what happened to it? Come on, talk to me, guys. It didn't work out. It didn't last. Because we were immature. Right? We weren't ready. We weren't prepared for it. The Bible tells us here, it, it gives this example, but it says, but, but the, uh, the servant and the child doesn't differ. Because let me tell you something, when, when, when you are a believer, when you just get saved, and when you're walking with Christ, you need people to be over you. All right? I'm going to walk this, but you need people to hold you accountable. You need somebody to hold your hand. Come here, Pastor. You need somebody to hold your hand to walk with you. Right? Because you don't know what you need to know. All right? And a lot of times we, we get saved and we go away from church. We go away from the people of God when you need to find somebody to walk with. All right? Because you, you're, not, you're not mature enough to stand on your own. All right? That's the reason that when you, when you get saved or when you start walking with God, you've got to stay close to the fire. Because if you get away from the fire, you'll start getting cold real quick. All right? So, so that's something that we need to embrace tonight. Is that if I'm going to walk with God, especially if I'm a new believer, especially if I'm immature, if I'm unlearned and I don't know what I need to know, I need to find somebody that I can walk with that's going to hold me accountable so I don't lose what I gain. Is there anybody here that understands how precious your salvation is? Is there anybody here that understands how valuable the relationship that God through His grace has given you and I to enjoy every day? Amen. When we understand how precious it is, we won't handle it any kind of way. It's kind of like my wife, for example. I love my wife more than life itself. 
And I'm not going to allow anything to come up, come in and fringe uh, or invade that, that part of our life. It's because I value that. Right? And so when I value my relationship with Christ, I begin to protect that relationship. I handle it like it's valuable. All right? It's kind of like your kids that, you know, many of you have children. You value those children. You protect those kids. You do whatever you can because it's valuable to you. Right? So if your relationship with Jesus is valuable, you'll do whatever it takes so that you can stay connected and stay walking according to his perfect plan for your life. Alright? Is there anybody here tonight? Amen. Alright? You know, because the deal is, guys, is that, you know, we're in a place right now is that, you know, we need to understand something. God, God is not catering to you a bit. Now, I know it's a disappointment. You know what I mean? It's just a disappointment to some people. God does not cater to people. Right? We have to adjust to God. God is not making adjustments for you and I. God is who He is. And it's up to us whether we accept who He is. We can read the Bible. God didn't make adjustments for people. Right? He put Himself out there. He presented Himself as like a fish in a bait. And you, you, you took the bait. I got saved 12 years ago. God didn't make me get saved. You know, it was His grace. It was His mercy. It was His undenying love. That I had to accept him. Amen. You know what I mean? I'm I, I just had to accept him. You know, he didn't stand up with me. You, know, you better accept me. No. I just had to accept him. I could just feel the love. I could just feel the power. All right? So, so it talks about airship here. It says here in verse 3, it says, Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the law, under the elements of this world. Meaning that the way that we live, we live according to the elements and the way that the world was structured. We didn't live by the laws of God because we didn't know the laws of God. Is there anybody here? Amen. Is there anybody here that, that you didn't know the laws of God when you got saved? Some of us don't know right now. And we, we didn't know what was expected out of us. We didn't know what, what, what was next. We didn't know what to do. We, we live the way the world lived because that's what we learn. But when we come and when we, when we translate from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, we live like the children of light. We, we don't live like the children of darkness any longer. We live like the children of light. And one thing that I shared with Pastor here a few minutes ago is that the Lord told me we're, we're at a crossroad in the earth. Right? And the crossroad has to do with identity. It has to do with identity. Because many of us, we don't know who we are. We, we, we really don't know who we are. All right? In Christ. I mean, we're struggling with who we really are. You know, because one day we, we want to walk with God, and one day we want to live the way God wants us to live. You know, but, but New Year's Eve come around, and, you know, we, we want to live like the world. You know? Holidays come up, we want to live like the world. You know, we want to get drunk like everybody else. You know, we want to get in sexual sin like everybody else. We, you know, we just, we just feel something. I'm preaching better than you say amen tonight. I know it's a Bible study, but this is the reality we live in. This is the reality where we are. You know what I mean? We listen to Dr. Phil on TV. We listen to Oprah Winfrey. We listen to all these people that life is, 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 is like broken glass. We come into the church and we don't want to listen to nobody. Because if we start dealing with people's issues and we start helping you to get healed, you know, the devil will move you out of the way because he don't want your work to be complete. The Bible tells me in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, it says, He that begun a good work in me has enough power to finish whatever he started. And so guess what? If God started the work in you, he has enough grace to finish it. But the deal is we don't sit still long enough to allow God to finish the work. And that's what God is doing right now in the body of Christ. You know, we, we, we're in uncharted waters right now. We, we're in unfamiliar territories right now. We've never had anybody to speak to us the way people speak to us now. We've never had people to confront us on our issues the way we're being confronted now. It's because, guess what? The devil is an aggressive devil. And so God wants us to be in the place to where we learn warfare in such a way that we can move with aggression. But if we don't know anything, we can't do anything. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. And so when a person is struggling with his or her identity, 
you begin to look like somebody that don't know which way to go. All right? We call it hypocrisy. It's a pretender. Because you don't want to leave the church. You, you want to hold on to one, you know, and cleave to the other. The Bible says you can't have two masters. You want to let something go. All right? If you're going to go with God, you want to go with God. Can, can I tell you something tonight, my friends? Everybody been hurt. Everybody been hurt. Most of us all, our trust has been violated. Some pastor, some brother, some sister, just somebody. I mean, some, some, something has happened in your life somewhere to cause you to be disgruntled. And to make excuses on why you're not living the way you should live. Can I tell you something? When we stand before God, there is no room for excuse. When it's over, it's over. You can't stand in heaven and bargain and argue with God. When it's finished, it's finished. When it's done, it's done. And so right now, today is 12, 12, 12. Right? If you know anything about the number 12, the number 12 is perfect order. Perfect government. And the government of God shall be manifest in the earth among his people like the world has never seen. God is going to raise up men and women of God that walk the streets, that walk the churches, that walk the schools, and they're going to tell it just like it is. Those are the type of people that God is raising up. And they're going to tell it without apology. They're not going to apologize about it. They're going to say, this is what God says. It's the way it is. You know what? Over the last... The last uh, a decade, we've literally begged people to stay in love with God. Please, please, please come to church. Please come. It's going to be good for you. We beg people to come to God. But, but when is it going to come the day that people are going to run to God because they want to be with God? My wife is going to have to beg me to come home. I go home because I love her. She come home because she loved me. So I come to the Lord because I love Him. So the deal is right now, is that just like the church in Galatia had issues, we got issues right now. We've got people that have crept in unaware, and they bedazzle us. They've spoken things over us that, that's nowhere in the Bible. They've declared things over us that's not, that no scripture can back up what they say. We open up the Bible, and we begin to look for some of the things that people are saying, and it's nowhere in the book. It's nowhere in the book. We got to get in the Bible. We got to study the book ourselves. We got to study the book. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved as a workman that rightly divide the Word of God. So that means that if I have to rightly divide the Word of God, I can wrongly divide it. The deal is right now, we've been too seeker friendly. We, we're concerned about whose toes we're going to step on. We're concerned about who's going to get upset, who's going to leave, who's going to disagree. That's not what God is concerned about. God is concerned about your soul. He's concerned about my soul. There are people hurting all over the earth. Some of you here right now, you're hurting. you got family problems. you got personal problems. you got job problems. you got mental problems. Pressure's all around you. And we need the Lord to come in and set us free. You mean to tell me we save and we still in bondage? The devil is a liar. Because we understand that we have become heirs to the throne of God through His Son, Jesus Christ. The blood that He shed over 2,000 years ago has been brought to set us free. What is freedom? Freedom is structured living within the boundaries that Christ Himself creates. It's structured. It's not chaotic. It's structured. We love Him and we live according to His ways. We want to be blessed, but we don't want to walk under the, um, the covenant blessing the way He prescribed Deuteronomy 28. He said, if you hearken dealing under my word, these blessings shall overtake you. It's our responsibility to hearken dealing to God's word. It doesn't mean we're perfect. It means that we honor Him. We respect Him. We want to be pleasing to Him. And when we don't please Him, we ask God to forgive us and be merciful to us because we need His mercy. We need His grace. We need Him to change us. We need Him to remove the bitterness out of us. We need Him to break off the callousness of our heart. We don't love the way we need to love. 
We don't have passion the way that we're supposed to have passion. When the last time have you thought about leading somebody to the Lord? But if you're excited about Jesus, how can you lead somebody else to a God that you're not excited about? How can you convince somebody else that God can deliver them when you're not delivered? Hear what I'm saying here tonight. God want to deliver you. He is the God of the Bible. He's the God of freedom. He's the God of total liberty. The Bible said that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Amen. I don't mean to scream at you tonight, but I'm telling you, it's just the passion that flows through me to try to communicate to you that there's a loving God that want to deliver you. There's a loving God that want to set you free. There's a loving God that want to put you into a better place than where you are now. We must get to the place to where we look at God and say, God, we need you. If we never understand that. We'll never approach him. Some of us, we're going through problems right now because God wants you to look at him. Mm -hmm. Some of us, we're going through difficult moments right now because God knows you'll look at him. Psalms 121, look to the hills which come to your help. Your help coming from the Lord. But the Bible says, we don't know anywhere else to look, Pastor. There's nowhere else to look. If you're somebody like me that have tried everything in the world, you know, my God, you only have Jesus to look to. You know, dope didn't do it. Women didn't do it. You know, drugs or whatever didn't do it. We only have Jesus to look to. Women didn't do it. None of that done it. The only thing did it was Jesus. The only thing that did it was Jesus. And we don't want to be in a place to where we're so legalistic to where we allow stuff to jump on us again. You know, that's what this whole deal talks about. Because what happened here is that these guys were struggling with their identity. Because once they had shook off all of this stuff that the Judaizers was, 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 was putting on them, all of a sudden they slipped back into it. Have anybody else, anybody here ever slipped back into anything that God brought you out of? Yes. Guys, don't be quiet on me. Because I'm telling you, Pastor Abe asked me to speak, and I'm telling you, I'm going to speak what God tell me as the pastor allow me to. God is speaking to you tonight. He's confronting you tonight. I know this is not your normal, usually Wednesday night deal, but God wants you. He wants your heart. He wants all of you. Some of us, you know, last year this time, man, we was on fire for God. It's like, man, we're going to save the world. Pastor Abe, what do you want us to do? We were on fire for God. But a couple months came by, and we had slipped back into that old mindset. We slipped back into that old slump. We fell back into sexual sin. We fell back into alcoholism. We fell back into lying and cheating and backbite. We fell back. Because we didn't understand that if we stayed in love with Him, He'll never fall out of love with us. It's very important for us to begin to analyze and to examine our lives personally. The Bible says over in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, it says, let a man examine himself to make sure that he's connected. When was the last time that you looked at yourself? Just listen. When was the last time you looked at you? We look at everybody else, Pastor. But when was the last time we looked at our hands? When was the last time we looked at us? When was the last time you looked in the mirror and said, man, I've drifted so far away from God? Some of us, we hadn't looked in a long time because we've become so full of self-righteousness to where we see what everybody else is doing and we don't want to see the error that we're in. It's time that we look in the mirror and say, Lord, create within me a clean heart and renew within me a right spirit. That's the type of prayer we need to pray. Lord, have mercy upon us so that we may be that awesome supernatural creation that you've called us to be. We're not perfect. We know that you are. Renew passion within us. Renew love within us. Renew zeal within us, God. There were some of you, you walked before God with clean hands and a pure heart, but something happened in your life to cause you to turn away from God. It's time.
time for us to examine ourselves. Say, why did I turn from God? Why did I move away from God? Why did I turn my back on God? He would never turn his back on me. Why did I do that? It's time now. We look at ourselves and say, God, if you're the God of Abraham, if you're the God of Isaac, I need deliverance. Elijah stood on Mount Carmel and he cried out to God. But before he cried out to God, he looked at the false prophets. He looked at all those that were around him and outnumbered him. And he said, let me tell you something. If Baal be God, let Baal show himself. But if God be God, let the God of Elijah show himself. The Bible says, how long must I wrestle between to repent and turn from your wicked ways and say, Lord, forgive me. Fall on our face with fear before God and say, Lord, I repent and I turn from my wicked ways, Lord. The Bible says in Psalms 119, it says, with a young man shall cleanse his ways and turn from the way that he lived. But to turn away from it. To turn away from it. There are things that have overtaken us. We have to turn away from it. It's not just somebody laying hands on you, praying for you. You've got to make a decision. Right. Jesus himself can lay hands on you and pray for you until you and I make up in our heart that we want what he has to offer. Nothing will never happen. You look to me to be the miracle worker. You look to Pastor A to be the miracle worker. The miracle worker. You look to the men and women of God to be the miracle worker. Guess what? We look to him. It's not my power. It's his power. It's not my anointing. It's his anointing. It's not my word, it's his word. We speak out what he says. Mm -hmm. yes. And it's up to us to respond to what God is saying. Yes. There's an invitation in the earth right now. And that invitation is for those that love Christ to come closer. I said a few minutes ago, it's 12, 12, 12 right now. It's a time of perfect order. It's a time of realigning. It's a time of rearranging. It's a time of repositioning, rethinking, regrouping, recouping, reevaluation. That's what time it is right now. It's a time that we must look at ourselves and say, Lord, I need you to help me because I want to be right. How many of you here tonight want to be right? You want to be right. You want to be right. But guess what? He said, I'll be a very present help in the time of trouble. And guess what? If I'm not right, I'm in trouble. I'm in a lot of trouble. And I need him to help me. And what I need to do is I need to repent. And as I repent, I need to take one step forward and say, Lord, here I am. You know, 12 years ago, October 7, 2000 was my day. That was my day. I got baptized August 1984. I'll never forget it, but I didn't know who Jesus was. But October 7, 2000, a miracle happened. I was living at 7128 Amy Street, Shreveport, Louisiana. It was about 12.30 at night. When God manifested himself to me. No, I didn't see Jesus like you're sitting here. It's the reality of Christ in hell became real to me. And from that moment to now, I've been completely free. No more drugs, no more alcohol, no more nicotine, no more women, nothing. I've been completely free in those areas of my life. 
And all I'm saying is the same Jesus that invaded my life almost 13 years ago is the same Jesus that want to invade your life tonight. Maybe you're saved. Maybe you're walking with God, but you're just struggling in some area of your life. Christ is here to deliver you. He's here to set you free. He's here to break the yoke of bondage off of your life. But it's up to you and I to make that decision. We're only a few days away from 2013. Who would have thought that we would ever see 2013? Maybe you did. But I'm telling you, I didn't see, I didn't see living the next day 13 years ago. I didn't have an expectancy to go beyond that. My expectancy that I would die young. I never thought that I'd be standing before people sharing the gospel of Christ. It never was on my agenda. But God had a plan. But it was up to me to answer the call. Can't tell you how many friends I've had that died and they gone to hell because they chose to walk according to their own ways versus God's ways. It's our job now to know that we have been given joint airship through Jesus Christ. We've been given joint airship. We've been seated in the heavenly places with Christ Jesus. When we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, everything that heaven has to offer is available for you and I. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8, verse 14 through 18, it gives you the whole layout about what the airship means. It's very important for us tonight to understand one thing if we don't understand anything else. That Jesus Christ loved us so much that he laid down his life to give you the freedom that he owned. He was never ever in bondage. He gave us the freedom that he possessed. Peter and John walked to a gate called Beautiful. There was a man at that gate begging for alms. Peter looked at him and said, silver and gold I don't have. But what I do have, I give to you. I can't give you something that I don't have. They gave him the miracle of freedom that had been given them by the Lord Jesus. And so tonight, I make a presentation to you. I make an appeal to you that you reevaluate your lives and say, you know what? I don't want to be the way that I've been. I want to be different. I want to be different concerning the things of Christ. Guess what? It's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you everything. I wouldn't stand here and lie to you tonight. It's going to cost you everything. It costs your family members. It costs your money. It costs your time. It costs you everything. But I promise you one thing. You'll never regret it. Once you dive in, you'll never regret making the decision to go full throttle with God. Sometimes it's so hard to look at people around you that you love and that, that you've been with your whole life. And you have to remove yourself away from them. Not in isolation. You just change the place that they are in your life. For Christ. Everybody's not good for you. Everybody's not healthy for you. Some of the greatest people that treat you well can be unhealthy for you. Mm -hmm. But you have to have enough wisdom from Christ to know who's healthy for you and who's not healthy for you. It doesn't mean that they are the devil and it doesn't mean that they mean you any harm. Sometimes people don't even know. But God giving you and I the heads up tonight so that we can know. Because if we love him, we'll forsake all for him. Peter said, Lord, we've given up everything for you. We've given houses, we've given cars, we've even given our family up for you. And Jesus stopped in his tracks. And he said, let me tell you something. Anything that you've given up in this lifetime, I shall repay in this lifetime. There is no way that you can give up something for Christ and he not repay you in this lifetime. I'm standing before you as living proof that I gave up family members, people that I love, people I slept with, people I lived with, people we, we was road dogs. I gave them up for Jesus. When I gave them up for Jesus, it was a matter of time God brought them into the kingdom. It's because they saw the God in me, and God used that as a bait to rescue their souls. 
God will always use a life to save a life. You will never ever have the right to expect a life to be saved without a life being sacrificed. Meaning a life being given to Christ as a point of contact to bring other people in. And so tonight, as I come to a close, I want you to close your eyes. Whoever person, please stand here tonight. Just stand. Just stand. I want you to close your eyes and I want you to ask yourself. I want you to ask yourself, where am I when it comes to my relationship in Jesus? Where am I? You can put something soft on these, Lord, please. Where am I concerning my relationship with Jesus? And I just want you to just pause there for a moment. I want, you, I want you to look at you. I want you to look at you. I want you to look at your life. <coughs> it's real easy for us to look at everybody else. But it's even greater or beneficial to you and I when we look at ourselves. When the smoke is cleared and everything is done, you're going to stand before the Lord and you're going to give an account for what you've done, not what I've done, not what the next person done, not what mom has done, not what dad has done. You're going to give an account for you. Nobody can stand before God on your behalf. You're going to stand for you. We could blame everybody else in the world. We could blame a bad childhood. We could blame a busted marriage. We could blame poverty. We can blame everybody. But guess what? You're not the first person. You're not the last person that has gone through something. And guess what? You won't be the first person or the last person that will make it through what you've been through. Don't use that as a crutch any longer to stay in your sin. Don't use that as a crutch any longer to stay in bondage any longer. You make a decision, a self-conscious decision right now that I'm breaking out. I'm breaking out. I'm packing my bags. I'm putting the sign right now. It's vacant here now, Lord. You can fill me up right now, God. I don't want anything else any longer, God. I want you to break it away. Break, break those things away in my life that are unhealthy. Break those things in my life that are unclean. Break them away, God. Cause me to be the man. Cause me to be the woman that you created me to be. I've been living so beneath the standard, Lord. You know, I've been wrestling with myself, not even the devil. I've been fighting you again. I've been fighting against me. And Lord, I want to be on your side all the way. I want to be on your side all the way. And so tonight I recommit myself to you. I recommit myself to you, Lord. Lord, I recommit my ways to you, Lord. Lord, I ask you to help me, Father, that I may walk upright all my ways, Lord. I need you to help me. I can't do it on my own. I need you. God, no, you can't do it on your own. We need you, God. But if you just surrender to him tonight, chains are breaking off your life. If you just surrender to him tonight, everything you need is in Christ Jesus. Everything. He's waiting for you tonight. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for you. He'll stop the struggle. He'll stop the harassment. He's waiting for you tonight. He's waiting for you. Surrender everything to him tonight. Just lift your hands and say, Lord, I surrender everything to you tonight. If you, if you mean this tonight, say, Lord, I surrender everything to you tonight. Everything that's in my life that is unlike you, God. I surrender to you right now. I ask you right now to cleanse me. I ask you right now to sanctify me. I ask you right now to deliver me. I ask you right now to make me whole, God. I ask you right now, Lord God, to remove everything out of me that is unlike you, God. Lord God, I present myself right now as a living sacrifice, Lord. Lord God, may you burn everything out of me that is unlike you, God. Everything that's in me that's hindering your word, God. Lord God, that you will eradicate it. You will move it out right now. In the name of Jesus, every form of the demonic harassment that has overtaken and plagued my life, God. Lord, I submit myself to you right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, set me free from depression. Set me free, Lord. Set me free from a heaviness, Lord. Set me free from guilt, Lord. That some of you get tonight that God is setting free from guilt. I hear the Lord say that you're being set free from guilt. Things that you've done and ways you've thought. Be set free tonight in the name of Jesus. You don't have to be guilty any longer. 
The blood of Jesus acquits you. The blood of Jesus sets you free. The lawyer, Jesus Christ, is in this building tonight to set you free. Everything that the enemy has held over your head, be set free tonight in the name of Jesus. You tell the devil, devil, sins I repented no longer will I allow the devil to hold over my head. For all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. Romans 3, 23. I declare tonight freedom tonight. Freedom in my mind. Freedom in my heart. I declare freedom tonight, Lord God. Freedom to praise you. Freedom to worship you. I declare freedom right now, Lord. Lord, no longer will I allow the devil to intimidate me. I declare freedom right now, God. Lord, God, freedom to live for you, Lord. No longer will I allow the devil to push me into a corner. No longer will I take my beliefs and hide them under the table. Freedom, Lord. Freedom, Lord. There's a spirit of liberation being released tonight. There's a spirit of liberation being released tonight. We declare freedom in this building tonight. We declare freedom tonight. Freedom from mindset. Freedom from religion, God. We break the hold of the enemy in the name of Jesus. There are many of you here that you struggle with sexual sin. The Lord is delivering you here tonight. Every demon of perversion, we call judgment on you tonight in the name of Jesus. We speak freedom over you in in Jesus' name. There's a spirit of perversion that is hovering over this region and many people have struggled even in their sexuality. We declare freedom over you tonight in the name of Jesus. Freedom over you. Be ye free in the name of Jesus. Repent of your sins and be free. Repent of your sins and be free in the name of Jesus. We declare it so tonight, Lord God. We declare it so tonight. There's only one that can give you freedom. There's only one that can deliver you. There's only one that can break the yokes of bondage off of your life. His name is Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's who he is. Nobody else can set you free. There's no other blood that can set you free. Only the blood of the Lamb of God can set you free. We declare freedom in this place, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We praise your name right now. We declare that those that are struggling in their body physically, we speak health and wellness over you tonight in the name of Jesus. As you lay hands on your body tonight, whatever area of sickness you've been plagued with, we declare health over you in Jesus' name. That the great physician, Jehovah Rapha, is touching your body tonight in the name of Jesus. We declare it so even now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. May it be so to bring glory and honor to your name. We praise you tonight, God. We praise you tonight. We praise your name, Lord God. Hallelujah. If you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, tonight is your night of salvation. We can't fake it any longer. Either we know Him or we don't. Either we're born again or we're not. Either you're with Him or you're not. The Bible says in Romans 10, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, believe that He came, He lived, He died, and rose from the grave with all power in His hand, the Bible says, Thou shalt be saved. There's only one way that you can be saved, not through works, lest any man should boast. Only by accepting the atoning work that Jesus Christ made available on the hill of Calvary, Golgotha, over 2,000 years ago. Either you're born again or you're not. If you're here tonight and you would like to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior and live in that newness that He prescribed for you, I just want you to raise your hand tonight and I'll lead you through the prayer of salvation. I'll lead you through the prayer of salvation. You can put your hand down. I see hands going up. I see hands going up. Tonight is your night that you renounce the ways of this world and you go with Christ. Tonight is that night. This night. And so tonight we're going to pray with you. All you that are saved. All you that are born again. We're going to pray this prayer together tonight. That Christ may come into your heart. May he take residence in your heart. May he live within you. All the days of your life. I want you to repeat after me right now. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I am a sinner. I and I need to be saved. And I need to be saved. Jesus, I Jesus, I accept you as my personal Lord, as my personal Lord. and as my Savior. And as my Savior. I, believe I believe that you are, that you are the, Son the Son of God. 
I believe that you came to this earth. You lived here. You died. And you rose from the grave for my sins. This day, I renounce you, Satan. And this day, I believe as I confess with my mouth and I receive you into my heart that I am born again. This day, it can never ever be taken away from me. Jesus, you are my Lord. Jesus, you are my Savior. Jesus, you are my Redeemer. Father God, you are my Heavenly Father. Holy Spirit, you are my comfort. I ask you to fill me up. Teach me the ways of the kingdom. Deliver me from the hands of the enemy. That from this day forward, I shall walk upright according to your words. Help me, Lord, to do as you would call me to do. May I find my place within this earth. And may I bring glory and honor to your name. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your blood that has set me free in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, give one praise to God. Many of you got touched by the power of God tonight. Some of you got saved tonight for the first time. The next step after salvation is baptism. And if there are some of you here desire to be baptized, Pastor Abe and I and uh, Eric and some of the other guys are going to be baptizing on Sunday. Uh, we'll go through the whole deal explaining to you about baptism so that this baptism that you take can be the most precious thing that you've ever done. That it won't be ritualistic. That it'll be the real deal. You know, I got baptized in 84, but I got baptized in 2004 for the first time since I've been saved, and my life has never been the same. It's never been the same. Some of you tonight, God, begin to unravel you. Some of you, I'm telling you, some of you, that you're so tight, but God is unraveling you. Don't resist what's happening to you right now. I just released, I, I release an invasion of dreams right now. I really hear the Lord. I release an invasion of dreams right now. That God is going to begin to visit some of you in, in, in dream format. Some of you are going to have supernatural experience with God in dreams. And you're going to go to bed one way and you're going to wake up a different way. I declare in the name of Jesus over the next 30 days of your life that God will not let up what's begun here tonight. That God will not let up. That this year shall not end without you making a decision to go with God. I declare that over you tonight. I declare that even as early as tonight, some of you are going to leave and God is going to begin to deal with you. The spirit of weeping is going to overtake some of you. The spirit of God is going to invade you. And I'm telling you about the spirit of God. It's going to happen to you. God is going to invade your life. It's going to begin to prick your heart like your heart has never been pricked. It's a very sensitive time right now on the earth. And God is calling us. He's calling us in so that we may walk upright with Him all the days of our life. Now the love that has begun in you Find somebody and let it flow from you to them. Let it flow from you to them. Let it handshake, hug, whatever it may be. Find somebody and bless them. Find somebody and just say, you know what, I don't want anything. I just want to be a blessing to you. Yeah, I don't even know why I'm doing this. And you don't even have to know my name. But I just want to, I just want to be a blessing to you. I remember I got saved and God allowed me to be a blessing to a lot of people. And I remember I would go and I would meet people. And uh, they would ask me, you know, what's your name? What's your name? Why are you doing this? I said, you know, Jesus gave you this. I said, you'll never ever see me ever again, but Jesus gave this you. And I'll just disappear. I've never seen those people ever again. I didn't want them to know my name. But I just wanted them to know that whatever I had, that it came from Jesus. Because God has put us here to be a representative of Him. That's why we are here. God has put us here for His purpose. We move within the earth for the purpose of God. That's why we're here. And so I pray in Jesus' name that that love, that love should just begin to pulsate in your heart. That you'll never, ever want to turn away from God. That you'll never, ever want to turn your back on Him. He'll never hurt you. He'll always be gentle with you. He'll never hurt you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give God a hand. Thank you. We're going to be praying for people up here tonight, Pastor Abe and I. 
uh, as we leave, but uh, we're going to take up an offering. Pastor Abel want to take up an offering tonight, and uh, you can give your offering as you leave here tonight. But I want to encourage you, church is not about money, but money has to do with God's system. A lot of people have perverted the gospel concerning money, but guess what? Buildings cannot be taken care of. Things cannot be taken care of without money. And so I want to encourage you tonight. If, you, if this word is ministered to you, if Pastor Ray has ministered to you, if, if something in some form or way, this building has been a blessing to you in any way, so into it. So into it. Whatever you give, if you don't feel what you're giving, it didn't move God. If it does not move you, it does not move God. All right? So I want you to give God your best gift tonight. And, and I don't, they don't have a bucket or anything up here, but you can just come lay it on the altar. He has a bucket or something. You know, just come, just come lay it on the altar. Just come, just come present your gift on the altar. Just come present your gift on the altar. So I'm going to speak a blessing over your gifts. And as you come, we'll dismiss and we'll be here praying for people. Father, we just thank you right now for every gift that's represented in this place tonight, Lord. Lord, God, we declare right now your blessing, even as you put in the mouth of Elijah to release blessing over the widow of Zarephath, what she had, she presented before heaven, God. We release blessing tonight in Jesus' name. And we declare multiplication, Father. Lord God, as a sign and a wonder to let people know that the system of giving and receiving comes from you. It originates from you, not man. Even though man has perverted it, it started with you, God, and it will end with you, God. And I declare in the name of Jesus a blessing upon every seed here tonight in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, bless us in this place. May we depart from this place, but never your presence, Lord. May your glory invade our lives all the days of our life. May your angels encamp around us, Lord, to keep us from evil, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Bless you guys. Come please and give your offer tonight. If you would like prayer, Pastor Abe and I are here. We will pray for you tonight. Bless you. <clears throat>